Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. We are fired up to help you live a fully funded life, coming at you each and every Monday with a new episode with right now relevant information helping you along that money journey. Today's episode is number 188. 12 away from 200. That's hard to believe. That is the voice of my co-host, Megan. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, you can also see us. How are you doing today? Doing good. Good. Great. Good. Good Good to great. You're moving up to great. (laughs) Yeah. So you're you're having a conversation right before we went with the live mic that, that you have this this growing sensation. It is growing. And, often. and so give everybody an update on your growing sensation. Yep. So we're grow. Uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm growing twins, <laughs> which is exhausting. Yes. <laughs> and chasing a two-year-old around. And if you're watching on YouTube, exhausting. she was talking about how the, these twin boys uh, have taken some space here and Lots we need space. like a boom mic now. It's Just awesome. Not comfortable yeah. anymore. But, you know, we're pr- going to pray these babies here. It's going to be awesome. They're going to join their older brother, Logan, at home very soon. And that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so tell everybody the title of this episode and what we're going to be working on. Yep. So our title is Couples and Money, Joint or Separate Bank Accounts. And um, so our question, our feature topic for today is in 2022, we're going to feature several series where we focus on a particular topic throughout the year. One of these series is beginning today, and it's couples and money. So in this series, we'll focus on various money topics and questions that couples commonly ask. And today's question is one we get asked a lot, and it's should we have joint or separate bank accounts? Yes. It's interesting to me that this question gets asked a lot. Yeah. I think just because I'm on the one, I do one of them. Yeah. But Yeah. You you have something that's normal for you. (laughs) Right. So a lot of people have... The other one and don't think that it's right, you know, so it's just, it's an interesting question. So So. we're going to have fun diving into that. That, that is an interesting uh, observation that, that it is interesting. You're, you're in a couple, right? You, you're not in, hopefully people are not in multiple couples. That would be very challenging, uh, relationship wise, but you know, so you're you're with one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. That's a different episode. (laughs) Joint or separate bank counts. You either have one or the other. Yeah. And we'll talk about that. Uh, we get that question a lot, but First, we're going to go to that wonderful section of the podcast. You know what time it is. Let's roll it. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully Funded Life. Courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. Well, today's current money events section is about the tax season that is upon us. It is February 7th, and many people, they've already filed for their tax refund. And as we always say... Many people, especially spenders, see the word fun right in the middle of the word refund, and they view that as a free license to just spend it on fun stuff. And that is one way you could use it. But how do you maximize your tax refund? Well, ultimately, uh, we're going to say, look at the fully funded life ladder Mm -hmm. and follow those steps. And wherever you're at, that's probably the best, most effective way to maximize those dollars. Mm -hmm. And so if you have no money saved, well, you should start with rung number two, which is to save one month's worth of expenses and put that in savings. Now we're going to discover whether that should be separate or joint bank accounts (laughs) in a minute. But if you, if you've already got that achieved, then go to rung three. Are you contributing money to your company retirement plan? Or if you don't have a company retirement plan, doing a hundred dollars a month, whichever is greater. Uh, 
If, if you aren't, well, that's what you should start doing. If you have done that the, and you're working on rung four, which is limiting all non-house, non-business debt, well, then you should apply it to debt. And we like the debt snowball around here where you pay off small debts. Now, the only exception I would say here is if that tax refund is so large that it can eliminate a debt that's not the smallest, but it eliminates something totally with a larger payment mm -hmm. so you can free up more monthly money to get monthly margin. And so we really strongly encourage you to use the Fully Funded Life Ladder. We'll have a link to it. Make sure you download that, take a look at it, and navigate using that to maximize your tax refund. And so that's it for today's current money events section. Yeah. And I would be interested too, like if some... You know, if you do take a little chunk and use it for fun, you know, what are you using it for? What What's a fun thing that your family is going to do? Yeah, you can drop a comment on yeah, YouTube. let us know. How are you going to use it? Maybe it would be a good idea for us to use Yeah. Something I've fun. got an idea of what I would do with a tax refund. I will not have a tax refund because <laughs> I'm a business owner and get fired up. But uh, I would buy baby pheasants. Uh, why? To raise them. Because I think they're cool looking. I don't and my think your wife wants, wants you to bring My wife does not home. want more livestock, but I did my see son a, likes one. I did see a picture, I don't remember if it was over Christmas or New Year's, where Ginger Justice was inside. Yes. So she's been letting... Ginger Justice is inside every day. Oh. A lot of the day. She's been coming in But she in has more. to sit in one spot. Mm. And so... Uh, Jen Sangle loves our golden retriever, Ginger Justice. She's just not willing to admit it out loud <laughs> right now. But she's such a sweet dog. And it. anybody who has a golden retriever knows how sweet that dog is. Mm. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it is amazing. Our dog, I think she feels sorry for her a little bit. Yeah. It's cold out there. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It's good. Maybe we can show a picture of Ginger Justice in the middle of this so people can look at it she's on cute. YouTube. Yeah. She's of her in the snowfall we had here in South Carolina. Get fired up. That was fun. She didn't know what to do with it. She was like prancing around and kind of sliding on it. It was really weird. We were she, trying to play ball with Barkley and he did not like the tennis balls were frozen and could not, like, he did not want to pick them up. So he, he would chase after mouth. the ball. Huh. But once he got to it, he was like, mm, nah. nah, not doing that. <laughs> but he would like roll around in it. Poor loved, little Southern dog. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. All right. Our success story today comes from one of our fully funded life members. And in January, we hosted an FFL member Zoom event on goal setting. And during the event, you outlined um, how to set successful goals, including types of financial goals people should be setting. And one of our FFL members, Pat, shared that since joining FFL, she started saving for a new car, which is a known upcoming expense. And she was in an accident and insurance paid her 100 or 10 k um, hundred would be ten k <laughs> towards a new vehicle um, because she had started her own savings and she had another ten thousand dollars to put towards a new vehicle. Um, and when this big purchase came up before she had originally planned, she was already um, because of her we call them cues, so known upcoming non monthly expenses savings. So that's awesome. She was ready to go. Yeah. Hopefully she's okay. Yeah. I mean, she was okay. Okay. She, that's we good. could see her. It was okay. a, it was a Zoom call with <laughs> our good. fully funded life community. And so I do thank Pat for sharing that, and I do celebrate that. You know, it is terrible when you have an accident because, you know, there's no good time to be in a car accident. Mm -hmm. um, and we're grateful that she was fine. But one of the things that happened is it totaled the vehicle. And I've had to deal with this with my daughter who got her car totaled uh, in a single car accident where she went into a ditch and kind of tore the bottom of the car off. Wild. And it was frustrating in many ways, you know. You know, now you don't have a working automobile. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're trying to find one. You kind of knew the issues with the one you had. Now you're having to buy another one and you're buying a used one and you don't know what yeah. issues it has. And can you find one like it? And, oh, no, prices have went up. And then you get this money from the insurance company. It sure does help. And it makes you very happy that you're carrying insurance. Mm -hmm. And it keeps you from robbing your emergency fund, right. which is fantastic. Yeah. So... Thank you so much, Pat, for sharing that. I will, I've, I've said it many times, short of having a budget every month that we actually followed, saving for our known upcoming expenses was the second greatest decision we ever made financially. It really helped us stick to our budget long term. Great job, Pat. Yes. Okay, so just to remind you, um, as part of our Couples and Money series, we're going to be focused on very to various topics and questions that couples commonly ask. And today... Our question is, should we have joint or separate bank accounts? So, I guess, listener, you can ask yourself, do you currently have joint 
or separate bank accounts with your spouse. So yeah, that's so what it means is, do you have like a bank account that you share or do you have a couple bank accounts, but you both share them, mm -hmm. you both access them, or do you have completely separate ones? It's in your own name, you know, hands off and you don't really know what's going on over there in your spouse's account. Yeah. You don't really know what's going on in yours. Uh, they don't really know what's I going say, on. I yours. hope you know what's going on. Hopefully here. you know what's going on. Some, many, many people don't know what's going on in theirs. That's the problem. That's a problem. That's why they're listening to the podcast. <laughs> But let's start by asking a question about the question. Why are we asked this question so much? Yeah. And so we have a reason why and that we believe in what is that? Yep, money wounds. Right. And so there's various type of money wounds, but I really like this title for it's kind of a catch-all for ways that we've seen money misused or money has been misused against us or how we failed with money in the past or whatever. And so one of the money wounds is previous relationships. I think this is one of the reasons why it's asked so much is many times when I asked a person, you know, uh, why, why do you have separate bank accounts? And they'll say, well, you know, in my first marriage, this was the way it was. Or, you know, I, I really felt like, Hey, they used it against me or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so and I was left stranded with no money when they w walked out on me. Yeah. So previous relationships, and that's really leads to the second money wound, which is what? Yeah, lack of trust. Right. So I think it fosters that. Yeah. And, and also, there's lack of trust that's been built maybe through ongoing behavior of, a, of, of their current spouse. Maybe they've been married forever, but one spouse is, is a spindomatic <laughs> they spend like crazy. I was reading Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace Junior <laughs> book to my daughter uh, last night, my youngest daughter. And it was the book that he got in big trouble with, and he actually had to destroy them all because he mentioned Space Camp in it, and he didn't know that was a trademark thing. Oh, gosh. Did you ever hear the story of Dave Ramsey talk about getting contacted by NASA? That's really for funny. violation of trademark and all that stuff. Uh, it, but it, I've got a copy of the one, the original hardcover book with it, and I was reading it to her. And... There's the dollar bill adventures and the spendomatic is in there. And, you know, people have a spouse that they've named spendomatic <laughs> who just spins like crazy. And as a means of being able to coexist, they've separated accounts. Mm -hmm. So there's a lack of trust. And so that's why they've done that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another money wound. What's that? Yep. So non-participative spouse. Right. So we've written in, is so this has been asked so much about yeah. how do I get somebody who won't participate with me in prayer, preparing a budget, yeah. following a budget, that we've written an ebook called Managing Money, Successfully Managing Money with a Non-Participating Spouse. And if you have a spouse who just won't, just won't show up for the meeting, won't participate in the conversations and wants to do whatever they want with money... That's one of the reasons why we see people having separate bank accounts and why we're asked this question so much. And we only answer stuff here at the podcast in this way. Mm -hmm. And it's answering the question, what would we do if yeah. we woke up tomorrow in your shoes? And so with assumptions that we're going to share in a minute, here is our answer to the question. Name the question again. Yep. Should we have joint or separate bank accounts? And the answer is you choose. Okay, but this comes with some big assumptions and we want to discuss those in detail today because I believe it's in the complexity of these thoughts that we usually discover why someone doesn't want to share bank accounts. Mm -hmm. So the default is you should share bank accounts. I mean, the, the Bible, Genesis 2.24, the preacher pronounced you uh, two as one. That means you're one entity, one bank account. But you should choose. And so we have different assumptions on why people would go to separate. And assumption number one is what? Yep. You both know all, you both know about all income. Yeah. So here's the deal. I don't care if you have joint or separate bank accounts, mm -hmm. as long as you both know about all the income. That's what, that's what breeds us saying you choose. Mm -hmm. Right? So many people want separate bank accounts so that their spouse doesn't know how much they earn. Can you imagine that? I, I cannot personally imagine yeah, that. Yeah, I, I have a hard time with that one. So, so there's been times when we've had conversations here, you know, uh, you were hired and you had a significant <laughs> yes. other at the moment. Yes. Uh, I was it a fiance not at yet. the moment? Not yet. It was dating for a while relationship. Serious. And you got, of marriage. And you got hired here. Mm-hmm. 
um, came in and interviewed for a part-time job, called you as you were leaving, said full-time job, <laughs> and said, it pays this much. I can't even remember what it was. Maybe, I'm sure you do. <laughs> Did you tell your special someone, Jordan, how much you were getting paid at that time? Yes. You did? Yes. Right. So be, you did that because there was trust that had been formed. Yeah. And we knew, I mean, we knew we were going to get married. We knew one day our finances would come together. And so f- for me, it wasn't uh, like, let me not tell him. But for for me, it was, I trust you. Hey, we're talking through this. Let's talk through. Should I accept the Should job I accept offer? This job? You know, like, yeah. what does this mean for our future family? What does this mean for like us? Like, it was a conversation that I didn't have to think twice about. Oh, huh. Personally. I like that. So that that is very important for people to hear that. You did not have to think twice about it. Yeah. I, I also don't have to think twice about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I always kind of joke, you know, whenever I find some money. Um, yeah, I, I found some money once and it, it was... Just once. It, it, well, I found money several times. But <laughs> this one time I found some money and I, I, I may or may not have shared this on the podcast, but I know I've shared it with our team here. But my dad literally discovered gold yeah. in a junk box that he had bought at an auction sometime long before. Didn't even really remember where it came from. <laughs> and he bought the whole box for a dollar because he saw a bit for a horse in it that he knew he could sell for five bucks. <laughs> and he's in the wintertime digging through this box and he finds a jar of gold. And he gave me some of the money and I couldn't believe it. I mean, we went to a refiner. It was just a great story and all this stuff. But he gave me some of the money, which... My father had never given me like nothing and he gave me some money and it was kind of like, oh, I'm going to put it in my pocket and I'm not going to tell Jen, right? I can't not not tell tell her. her. I just (laughs) tell her, you know, within three seconds, I tell her. And, and so we both know about all income and, and many people, they don't want that because they don't trust. They don't, they, that because of previous relationships, because they have a non-participating spouse and that's why they want separate bank accounts. And I would tell you this, if you have separate bank accounts and you both don't know all the income, it opens the door for the de- for deception or the feeling of being deceived, even if deception doesn't exist. Yeah. Because it's like, hey, what are you hiding over there? Mm-hmm. So if you're going to have separate bank accounts, the assumption that we're making on saying that's okay is you both know about all income from your regular J-O-B and any side income. Mm-hmm. Okay. Assumption number two. Yep. You both participate in planning the use of all income every month, aka budgeting. Right. And so you both participate in planning the use of some of your income every month Mm -hmm. or all of it. That's right. All All. of it. And AKA stands for (laughs) also known as budgeting. And many people want separate bank accounts so their spouse doesn't know where they are spending their money. Hmm. Hmm. And, and that, and then that therein lies the issue. Yeah. And when that happens, uh, there is always a feeling of mistrust. Yeah. There is a feeling of you have some secret that you're hiding. And, and here's the thing, surprise, surprise, they usually are. Yeah. And so I, I, I think it's very important that this assumption is stated over and over again. You know, number one is you know all about all income, but you also know about all outgo. Yeah. Huge. I think a lot of times we talk about like blind spots that we have, and I think it could be as simple as like, maybe you really love shopping on Amazon and it just is easy and you can do it. And then your spouse doesn't see the 18 purchases you just made that month, but the Amazon boxes arrive. Maybe you can quickly unpack them and your spouse doesn't know all of a sudden these new things appear, but like you don't want to share because you don't want somebody else to keep you accountable for the way that you're spending your money. Exactly. And it's like, and you already feel bad enough. Yeah, It's like a blind spot you have, but you need somebody else to be able to say like the open and the honesty there comes when someone else can say like, Hey, maybe we're spending too much here. So I think this is a really important time to share something. It just, you, what you sharing that, kind of jiggled something in my head. It's a weird statement, but, uh, I didn't think I would say the word jiggled today, but you know what that means? Like shake it up. And, and here's the thought is we, Jen and I do a budget every month. Mm -hmm. I prepare it. She comes, looks at it. And then she says, yes, that's good. Or add that switch, blah, 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 blah. But, but I would say every two to three months, 
I actually share with her the account balances. I update the balances Mm -hmm. in our different bank accounts that we all have our name. We have both our names on. And I think that is the ultimate accountability is that she sees that she knows that she has free, fair and unfettered access to it. Mm -hmm. And that means that any opportunity for being feeling deceived, being misled or left out goes away in that moment. And also, and you, you've probably heard Dave Ramsey talk about this in the past. Um, you've heard Mary, uh, uh, Mary Hunt definitely teaches it in her book, Debt Proof Living and Debt Proof Marriage. And you also uh, see Susie Orman talk about it is this. She wants to know, do we have the emergency fund? Is the emergency fund healthy? Mm-hmm. That's what she wants to know. Yeah. She could care less about all the other little accounts. She wants to know, is the emergency fund there? Because if it's there... Things are good. Yeah. And she's good. Uh, and so that's very important is maybe just maybe you participate in the spending of the money through a budget, but then you update where your account balances are, maybe even log in and show it because mm-hmm. that is the ultimate proof is logging in to the bank account and seeing the money there, not typing it in an Excel spreadsheet and saying, hey, look, we have this money, but it's really not. Yeah. So very important. Yeah. Okay. Me and Jen are very alike. Okay. I'm the same way. So yeah. Jordan handles all of it, but we both have access to everything. We both have logins. I can log in anytime. How often do you log in? I don't, honestly, not very often because yeah. I like, well, I get the email. So if he's moving money around to pay bills, oh, there you go. You're getting the, you're getting the, you know, and he's telling like, like this morning he said, Hey, I'm moving money around so I can pay the credit card bill that we just got. I'm like, okay, great. So I know when emails come in, money is moving around and shifting. Like, I know that's why. That's good. You know, and but it, it does help to log in, like specifically with like Ally, or I think like Marcus is probably the same way, or different different um, accounts like that that allow you to have multiple sub accounts. They show you the big this big ring where you can see this is how much money you have in the total account. This is how many much money it breaks down in each of yours. So then you can see. And how many sub accounts do you guys have? We have a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Is it, is it over under 20 or is it more? I don't think it's more. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) You got to save for a lot of things. That's awesome. (laughs) Uh, So assumption number three is what? Yep. You agree to share surprise expenses or income with each other. Yeah. And so I think that's really important is there is going to be surprise expenses. I mean, that's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you need to make sure you share those. And that the, one way to share it is at the budget meeting or at the moment it happens. I mean, there's just our, there's surprises one. And of course, we all love the surprise income one. We need yeah. to share that too. Yeah. And so uh, over the last year, so many people have gotten that surprise money for their kids every month that stopped at the start of this year. But they were getting, you know, $250 for certain kids and $300 for other kids. Mm-hmm. And it was happening every month on the 15th or whatever. Yeah. And, and that was surprise income at the start. And, you know, after a while, people start counting on that. Uh, same thing on expenses. You know, if you have a surprise expense, make sure you share it. Because anytime you have that happen and you don't share it, that can put a seed of, of hey, can I trust you to share stuff with me mm-hmm. and a seed of doubt? Yeah. Okay. So th- again, these four assumptions that we're sharing, we got one more to go are making sure it, that it, it doesn't matter if you have separate accounts or joint accounts, as long as these four things are in place, it's okay to have either. Yeah. Okay. If they're not in place, you need to have joint accounts so that each of you can see the picture at all times. Yep. Okay. Assumption number four, you both have written down your plans, hopes, and dreams, right? And this is rung one of the fully funded life ladder is you got to have both written down your plans, hopes, and dreams. Have a PhD in your PhDs, a PhD in your plans, hopes, and dreams. And we really want to make sure you do that because it helps ensure alignment of your finances and financial decisions so that the things that are most important to you are funded. I mean, that's ultimately the goal is that collectively as a couple, you're moving forward towards your shared plans, hopes, and dreams, and each of your individual plans, hopes, and dreams. And I think that that really, if the if these four assumptions are in place, but primarily number four, knowing each other's plans, hopes, and dreams individually, and knowing those shared ones, well, that that kind of keeps you from doing deceptive, weirdo stuff with your money, yeah. right? 
and and hiding that habit of whatever it is that you're spending money on, mm-hmm. you know, or or that that thing that hobby that is robbing money. You know, I very fast I could spend all my money on animals and on hunting, fishing, you know, stuff like that. Sound it's just, like a country song. It's just my thing <laughs> I know. Hunting, fishing, loving every day. Yeah. Luke Bryan, that's a prayer that country boy prays. Yes, mm-hmm. that's it. So I, I would just say if those four assumptions are in place, it does not matter. Again, ideally joint accounts, but it doesn't matter. Anything else you want to share with that? I mean, I think it would be easy if you do have separate to want to pick and choose these assumptions to say like, oh, well, three out of four is not bad, Ooh. but really needs to be all of them. You know, it's, it's, I think it's more about like, I think it's easy to become legalistic about it. And it's really about the heart behind it of, are, do you trust each other? Do you have that trust where you feel like you can share and talk about it with each other? Or is there something that's keeping that like maybe... Um, you need to talk about it or maybe seek counseling for it. You know, there's all these different avenues that can help, but I think ultimately looking at the heart behind it of why do you feel like you have to have separate or what do you feel like you have, you're hiding or you don't want your other spouse to know, or, you know, you know, just really taking some time to reflect on that. That's really, really good observation there. Um, our, our quote today is from Helen Keller Mm -hmm. and she said this statement, I I know she said it about something much greater, but I think it applies for this today. And she said, alone, we can do so little together. We can do so much. And that's what I really want to remind couples. You know, if you do this alone, you can accomplish something, but you will not maximize your money like you can if you work and collaborate together on it. Mm-hmm. So best of luck with that. We know you guys can do it. And hey, if you have a spouse who's kind of off on the fence or off saying they're doing their own thing, maybe have them listen to this podcast with you and, uh, mm-hmm. and make sure that they're well rested. The kids are not yeah. present, right? And, and the right moment. But I, I really want you to be able to live fully funded lives together. And the way you maximize it is making sure you know that these four assumptions are working and operating in your life. Yeah. And we always, I mean, if you have a question, feel free to email us, you know, you can email us at info at IWBNIN.com, but also like, honestly, a way, if your spouse is not really interested, a way might be to join fully funded life. And maybe they would participate in a coaching call where it's less about like, this topic and more about like, Hey, let's talk about our finances. Let's like meet with somebody who, you know, is a professional who can help us with this. And maybe they would be open to that. So that's always an option as well. Exactly. Yep. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about next week. Yes. So next week we're going to start um, a series called this or that series. And it's, and we're going to focus on save or pay off debt. So we're going to say, should I focus on building up my savings account or should I use extra money to pay off debt? And it's going to be Valentine's Day, so that is a very yeah. romantic topic there. Saving, <laughs> Saving or, or paying, paying off, off debt. debt. Uh, we'll try to make it that way <laughs> on February 14th, Valentine's Day, next Monday. Hey, if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who could benefit. You, maybe your spouse who's not participating. You can do this by quickly rating the podcast, leaving a review. Those rating and reviews will help us make the podcast better for our listeners. If you've implemented one of our tips, please share your success story with us, just like Pat did. And you can email it at info at IWBNIN.com or on any of our social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, comment. Uh, share with us the type of dog you have. We said about our golden retriever, share with us the greatest tip that has helped you and your spouse or uh, be able to be on the same page with your finances. And if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, that would be our highest honor and privilege that you did that and that we could serve you each and every week with the podcast. Until then, hey, I did say that next week is Valentine's Day. This is your seven day warning to get something (laughs) for that special someone. Have a great week. Get fired up. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.